Hello everyone. Today we're going to talk about soft water in your aquarium and reverse osmosis systems, how they work, how you should treat your water when using RO, and yeah, that's it. Let's go. First things first, it's called reverse osmose. I'm going to say RO because it's much easier and I'm going to use this phrase a lot in this video. RO is the only proper way to make soft water for your aquarium. There are different types of soft water available, but most of them are not real soft water, just fake. Let's put it that way. The most common softening systems in a household are usually uh, ionizing systems, which can get rid of all the minerals that leave a mark on your water tap or even on your aquarium. You know, the white residue when your water level drops. But the water itself is actually not soft. They just get rid of those materials. And that's really good for any household items actually uh, that suffer from hard water. But the aquarium itself, for a perfect result, for soft water liking plants and animals, you need RO. What RO is, it's a system that gives you 99.85% or something like that water, H2O. There's nothing else in it. And that's the most important thing for soft water. How it actually works is this is an RO system. This connector goes to your kitchen tap or any sidewall tap that you create for it. And then a piece of hose goes from this to this. This is just a simple tap. You can close this or open this just to make sure that there's no water going through the system if it's not necessary. The water goes into the two legs of the system which contain pre-filters and two different types. One of them is an actual physical filter because water is not really clean. There are some small pieces of debris inside that you can't see with your eyes but it can actually clog the membrane which we're gonna get to soon. The other one is chemical filtration. It's actually active carbon filter. This takes out chlorine from the water, for example, which we all know is bad for your aquarium. So this gets rid of any chemical stuff. After this, there's still a lot of minerals in your water and that's what gives you water hardness. That's where the membrane comes in. This is actually the piece that's inside this housing. So the water went through the two pre-filters and then on this line, this hose, it goes into the membrane housing. In the membrane you have this, and then on the other end, you have two outcoming lines. One of them has a floor restrictor, the other one is free. The free one is gonna be your soft water, it's gonna be your clean water. The one with the floor restrictor is gonna be your waste, basically. This is the membrane from the side. It's rolled up in a way that you get a lot of layers separating each other. And then, because of this floor restrictor, there is pressure in the membrane housing. So it doesn't allow the water to just go through freely on the system. And because of this pressure, the water actually goes through the layers. And that's how you get a separated soft water and waste. The waste will be really concentrated. So, for example, if your water is 400 ppm, because we measure TDS, you know, the total dissolved salts in the water, if it's around 400 ppm, your wastewater is gonna be, I don't know, 600, 800, something like that. And your clean water is gonna be under 10, if everything works as it should, if the membrane is good enough. Obviously, there are some differences uh, in quality and in actual performance of these systems. And uh, this relies on the membrane and the flow restrictor. So for example, this one, there's a small hundred on this. It means it's a hundred gallons per day. So this system would make a hundred gallons of soft water in 24 hours. This depends on the temperature of the incoming water. It also depends on the pressure of your household uh, water lines. But all in all, it should do 100. There are different types of this. There's 50 gallon per day. There is 200 gallons per day. There are bigger systems that can do 
400 or even 800 gallons per day. That's a different story. This is the performance of the RO system. And the connection with the restriction flow is that there are different types. This is a 420 restriction valve. You have to choose the matching one to your membrane. So you can find information about this online. If you choose uh, a 200 GPD membrane, you can find information what type of flow restrictor you need for that. Then your soft water came out. It's not good for your aquarium. However, you would imagine that's the best option. It's actually too soft. So that's where these came in. Remineralization. It's really important. If you just put in soft water in your tank, there are different things happening which are not good for your aquarium. First of all, the pH of soft water is under six, way under six, um, which is not good for your bacteria. So your filtration is getting a hit uh, because of the pH. And then all your animals need some minerals as well. For example, your shrimps to create the new shell, because you know from time to time they just get rid of the old one. They have to make a new one and for that they need minerals. Also fish need some kind of minerals in the water as well. So there is actually a term called osmotic shock when the water is too clean or too soft. Uh, it can actually give a shock to your, uh, to your fish. Now there's two types of salts for remineralization. One of them is GH+, the other one is GHKH+. How do you decide which one to use? It actually depends on your setup. There are some hardscape elements that raise KH. For example, serious stones. All the white linings in it, it's actually a material that gets dissolved in your water and it actually raises the KH level of your water. But for example, lava stones, they don't do anything to your water parameters. They're not gonna raise your KH. In a serial tank, you would use GH plus because you already have some KH from the stones, but you need to raise GH. In a lava stone setup, you would use GH KH plus because you don't have anything else raising KH. And KH is really important in stabilizing pH in your aquarium. The most common thing we see when people try to use GH only in a new setup with osmose water is plant smelting. Obviously, this can happen for a lot of different reasons. Mainly what we see is the biggest problem usually is zero KH in the tank and pH fluctuates because of this uh, when CO2 turns on and off. And that's why the plants are actually melting. So it's really important to choose the correct one and if you rebuild your tank and you already have one of these, make sure that you have the proper one for the new setup as well, because it might be different. And how you measure what you need is this little guy, which is called a TDS meter. It's like a digital pencil. You just put the end of it in the water and if I turn it on, this is how you measure how much of the salts you need to add into your tank. Obviously, there are some uh, dosages on any product like this, but it's actually different for every single aquarium. What we usually recommend is fill your tank with osmose water. Let it run for five to 10 minutes, then measure the TDS. It's gonna be 50 ppm. I just said something, it's, it's different for everything. Then grab your salt, GH plus or GH, KH plus, depending on your tank, what it needs, and add just one spoonful. Then wait five minutes again and see how much it's changed. So measure again with the TDS meter. It might jump up from 50 to 100. It might jump from 50 to 55. Obviously it depends again on a lot of things in the tank, the size of the tank, everything like this. Maintenance of the system is really simple. You need to replace the two pre-filters about every six months or so. It also depends on how bad your tap water is. So if it's really, really hard or it's really dusty or something like that, then you might need to replace them every three months. But every six months is a good base to start from. If you replace these frequently, then you save your membrane. Because if these two get clogged up and they're not working properly anymore, then a lot of stuff goes into your membrane, which actually makes this go bad. So that's why you need to change these. With proper maintenance of the pre-filters, 
The membrane can last up to two, three, or even five years, something like that. How you can see it, uh, it's going bad, is measuring the soft water coming out of your system. So as I mentioned, it should be around or even under 10 ppm, the clean water coming out of the system. If you see it starting to raise, that means that there's some problem in the system. It's not sure that your membrane, but there might be something wrong. So if you measure 30 ppm or 50 ppm on your clean water coming out right out of the system, first you should replace the pre-filters. Doesn't matter when you did the last replacement, that should be the first thing. Replace them to new and measure again. If it drops down to 10 or under, then your membrane is still fine. If it doesn't go to around 10 or under, then it's time to replace your membrane. I think we've covered everything. If you have some questions left about how to use RO, then leave some comments and we might get them in the next Q&A video. And I hope you've learned something. I hope you've learned enough about GH and GHKH+, plus because this is a frequent question we have. And yeah, see you next time. Goodbye.